do the first and the last. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. On the last, when shall I reach that happy place and be forever blessed? When shall Is it? Yeah. Pray for Kevin's name you're praying for, but you might just make an extra effort, would you please? <laughs> Jonah chapter 1. Don't get all excited. Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1. Jonah, I, I got to tell you the truth just in case you find out. There's some things preachers aren't supposed to tell you. We're supposed to tell you that we work hard and that our wives don't write our messages, but mine writes some of them. She didn't write it, write it, but she'll go, you ought to preach on her, and she'll, but she is a good pastor, so I listen to what she says because her pastor sounds pretty smart. And I wanted to, you know, sometimes you're supposed to read the scripture and then God goes, hey, I want you, this all, I, I want you to preach on that. Well, I had this thought going through my mind and I said, Lord, if it'd be okay, there's something I want to preach about, but I don't have a scripture. So he gave me one, Jonah. And I checked with him. He said it was okay. I'm not just looking for a scripture to match this. I prayed about it and worked on it. But of course, when you think of Jonah, a lot of things come to your mind. You think fish, whale, boat, Nineveh, him running. I think of the great revival that took place when God gave him a second chance. And he went back to Nineveh and he preached. And I think of him in chapter 4 sitting on the hill pouting, whining about what God did. He didn't do it. Jonah didn't do it. God did it. And he didn't like how God was working. And you and I are too afraid to admit that sometimes we don't like the way God works, but I'll tell you how you can like how God works. If you do everything he tells you, you'll like how he works. And so Jonah found out the hard way. So this has been on my heart. Nothing, it, it's so simple. Some of you, again, and I know this happens to you week after week, and some of you know that the sermons that we sell for a dollar are not worth that. And we're going to pay you pretty soon a dollar if you'll take one. But the thought here is just so simple, but it's so needful. It's so needful. If you'll read with me, I want to read the first, you know the story, but there's something in here that came out that I want to use to talk about the subject, why we ought not live for ourselves. Why? We're very selfish. We live in a selfish time. 
We're worried about us. We're worried about what we get. We're worried about how we look. We're worried about what we... Uh, some of you, I want you to look at the clock. You're worried about you need to get out of here. You've got things to do. And I could tell, you know, I, I, here's one thing I know about you. I don't know a lot about you, but I do know if you're a good listener or not. That I could tell. Now, I'm not talking about the way you live. I'm talking about the way you soak it in when you sit through a service. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship. Did the ship, did God put the ship there? Jonah thought he did. Jonah now is convincing himself, whether he thinks he's doing the right thing or not, he's still doing it. And I don't know if you've read the scripture, but the Bible says, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And part of the interpretation of that verse is that when a person makes their mind up and won't change, they're not going to change. Hard to convince them. And so Jonah is not convinced that he ought to go to Nineveh. Jonah's convinced that he ought not go to Nineveh. So on his trip away from Nineveh, watch me now, on his trip away, he's supposed to go to Nineveh. Is Nin okay? You're not offended? I don't know if that's racist. But he decides to go to Tarshish. Okay? So he's here. God tells him to go to Nineveh. Right? My theology correct? My interpretation of the scriptures? But Jonah decides that he's going to go the other way and he opts for Tarshish. On the way... He finds a ship that will get him to Tarshish. You know what? I'll I'll mention this. I don't mention it enough, but I want to mention it again. And and I I don't have... Listen to how I'm saying this. If I could do one thing over... When I raised my kids, I was a young kid. I was in my 20s. My early 30s as I raised... I only knew what you know when you're in your 20s and your 30s. So, of course, if I raise them now, it'd be a lot different. Well, we don't do that. But the one thing, as I look back, I've talked to them, I've prayed about it, I thought, if there's one thing I would do different, I'm helping you that have kids or going to have kids. There's one thing I would do different. I would teach them more regularly. Some of you, are you listening? Because this is going to kind of throw you off. I would, t- we, we, listen, we, I, I honestly, I'm not bragging, I'm just, I'm just telling you, I was trying to be obedient to God. I don't remember not praying and reading the Bible with my kids every day. If I forgot, if I said, and it happened a lot, if I said, hey, time for bed, you know what my kids said? Are we going to read the Bible and pray? I don't think it was because they wanted it so much as it was caught you or have it. If I could do again what I did, I would spend more time teaching them about the devil. The devil's real. Devil's real. And we're acting like he's not. And you and I know that God didn't supply that ship. And I'm not saying that the devil picked up a ship and set it at the port of Joppa. But I'm saying to you, when you try to get away from God or try not to do what God wants you to do, any, any disobedience, the devil's going to help you 
be disobedient. Oh, I don't believe in the devil. You will. You will. Verse 3, but Jonah rose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish. Notice them. Okay, I have a, I have a point here. Notice verse 3, them. You say, well, what, what them? Notice them. He wasn't alone. He said that he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them under Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Verse 4, but the Lord. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God's a good father? I mean, what kind of story would this be if God let Jonah get away with what he wanted to do? What kind of story would it be if it said Jonah got in the ship, went to Tarshish, and there lived for the devil? It says when he got on that ship, he found a ship, he's thinking, wow. He asked the guy, where are you going? The guy said, Tarshish. Jonah said, me too. The guy said, well, here's how much it costs. Jonah said, I got money. I'll pay. He paid. He got on the ship, but he wasn't alone. It says he went with them. Verse 4, but the Lord, does the Lord know everything you do? Does he like it when you don't do the right thing? No. Does he still know it? He doesn't turn away when you do the wrong thing. He doesn't go, I'm not going to look. Verse 4, but the Lord sent on a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners, plural, mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. They didn't know what to do. They're trying to save their own necks. They're trying to make this thing not sink. And so they're scared to death. They're praying. They don't know who to pray to. They're just praying to anyone, anything. Verse 5 says, But Jonah, in the middle, but Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. You know what I have written in my Bible there next to that, but Jonah? I have senseless. Meaning, when you get away from God, you become senseless. You do things you never thought you'd do. You know why I know that's true? Because I've done it. You know why I know that's true? Because I talk to people all the time who've done that. I go, why'd you do that? They'll go, I don't know. I go, that's not an answer. When you did this, you, told, you shouldn't have done that. No, you shouldn't have done it. Why'd you do it? All the time. Well, why? I don't know. Well, you don't know. Why don't you walk out into traffic then? Why don't you put a sleeping bag on the railroad tracks? Well, I'd be killed. Well, sin, the Bible says, will kill you. It isn't that we don't know that. It's that we become senseless to it. Once you get away from God, you lose hearing him. You lose his guidance, his protection. So it says there that while they're dying, correct? While they're dying, the guys on the ship, Jonah's sleeping. That's incredible. He's thinking, I don't know there's no storm. That's because he's, he's in denial. He's probably depressed. He's getting away. He, he got away from God, and he's hiding. Verse 6, so the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be, watch now, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Is Jonah alone on the ship? No. Verse 7. They said, every one, every one to his fellow, come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. 
So they cast lots. They, they cast lots. And the lot fell upon Jonah. Verse 8. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation? Whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said, verse 9, unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven. See, Jonah thought he was all alone. You know what's really crazy? Have you ever heard someone say, Maybe you said it to your kids. Maybe you said it to a good friend. Maybe you said to them, you know, you got to be careful when you make these kind of decisions. You know, you got to be careful what you choose. Have you ever heard someone say, hey, it's my decision. It's nobody else's business. I got news for you. It's everybody's business. It's everybody you touch and affect. And, and listen to me. This is one of my points, and I don't want to give it away. But your life affects people you don't know. Jonah says, interesting, verse 9. He said, I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea. The sea and the dry land. You think he's thinking this storm came for him? If God made the sea, he's in control of the sea. And so they're about to drown from the sea. And they wish they were on dry land. And Jonah reminds them, I serve this God who, who did. In verse 10, then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them, Verse 11, then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Jonah, what I'm seeing there is that Jonah would rather die than obey God. Wouldn't the smart thing to say be, you know what, guys, would you turn this boat around, take me back to Joppa? I've got business to attend to back at Joppa. In fact, turn around and just take me all the way to Nineveh. He didn't say that. He said, I'm in trouble. I did not go to Nineveh. I'm headed to Tarshish. I'm on this ship. I slept while you guys were about dead. He said, what you need to do is take me up, throw me overboard. Verse 14, wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, we beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life. Lay not upon us innocent blood for thou, O Lord, has done as it pleased thee. So, verse 15, so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from a raging. Then the men, I'm going to just keep reading, then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. The, the story's obvious. Let me, let me plan it in your mind so you know where we're at, where we're going. Jo Jonah is told directly by God, verse 1, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. God wanted Jonah to preach in Nineveh, but Jonah decides that he'll run away. He gets on a ship only, follow me now, this is where this is personal. He gets on a ship only thinking about himself. Can I, can I show you? I'm not going to show you. I'm going to read it. This verse got me through Bible college. Romans 15 and verse 3 says, For even Christ pleased not himself. I would whine. It's early. I took 7 o'clock. 7 a.m. classes every day. I, every year, I wanted to get there early and get out. I was there, and I was up late 
Sometimes I was preaching somewhere. I'd get in 2, 3 in the morning, have to get up, be in class, be sharp, have a quiz, have a test. And I would, and then, man, it hit me. I read this verse and I thought, you know, this isn't about, this isn't about me. And your life, dear, dear folks, your life is not about you. Jonah wasn't the first person to disobey God, and he won't be the last. He forgot. Jonah forgot that his life, whether he was preaching or running from God, would have an effect on others. Every decision that you make affects someone else. And every time you sin, it affects someone else's life, whether you like it or not. Three points. Number one. Got to go quick. I'm not writing them. Number one. First point. Your life affects people you don't know. I was in Walmart. I walked into the glasses place. Because I'm frustrated about that whole deal, and we won't get into that. But I thought, I, I walked in, and the gal said, is there something we can help you with? And she looked from here, and I thought, man, I, I'm pretty sure I witnessed to her, and she listened. So I'm looking, and she said, if you need anything, let me know. She turned around, and she said, hey, isn't your name Vito? I said, man, how did you remember that? She said, you were in here about four years ago. Now I remember you gave me something with your name on it. Our lives affect people we don't know. What you decide. What you do, what you say, where you go. You saw that everyone in that boat with Jonah was in trouble because of Jonah's decision. He refused. Jonah refused to go to Nineveh, and that showed that he didn't care if they went to hell or not. People could tell. People could tell. I wish some of your neighbors, when you choose not to go to church, I, I'm not saying when you're sick, when you choose not to go to church, I wish your neighbors would call you and go, hey, aren't you going to church tonight? <laughs> Wouldn't that just burst your bubble? What do they call and said, hey, John, this is your neighbor, Adeline. I don't know your name. I noticed you and Pat didn't leave her church. Something wrong? Here's John. No. Well, well, how is it that you're going all the time and tonight you're not going? Let me remind you that other people are affected when we disobey God. Did Jonah, watch me, watch me. Did Jonah need to be in Nineveh? Want help? Did God want Jonah in Nineveh? So there are people in Nineveh he didn't even know who God told him to preach to. And by the way, we know that when he went the second time, that people that he didn't even know got saved. Here's what I don't say anymore. I'm not going to whisper, listen. I'm not going to witness to them. They won't listen. It's not up to me whether they listen or not. It's up to me to do what I'm supposed to do. No, not everybody listens. Some people are too busy. I'll say, please read that. I'll quiz you on it later. I'll come back to them. I'm going to ask you if you read it. You realize if you don't pray, there are people that aren't prayed for. You realize that if you don't tell people how to get to heaven, then they very possibly could die and go to hell. So when you run from what God wants you to do, you're hindering, you're stopping what God wants done. You say, you know what? I didn't come here for this tonight. I quite, this is kind of a Sunday message, isn't it? It is, but don't tell anybody. We're throwing it in on a Wednesday because I ran out. Your life affects people you don't know. Number two, your life affects, number two, your life affects people close to you. Jonah's disobedience 
directly affected the men on the ship. They did all they could to try to keep the ship from sinking, all because, all because, they're only sinking because of Jonah. Right? They're in their predicament because of what Jonah decided. When a person drinks alcohol or does drugs, they're touching, they're affecting the lives of others. And our example of being disobedient to God and failing to really seek God affects those that look to us for an example. We, we act like it's no big deal. It is a big deal. It's a big deal that people... Whether you think, oh, i got to answer to God, and, and I believe that, I know that. But if God figured that you could live how you want, you just answer to him, he would have killed you or raptured you and taken you to heaven. But he left you here, and he didn't leave you and I here to make him look bad. Every decision we make, every act that we commit that's sinful has consequences, not just for us. Jonah's sleeping when he should have been preaching. Man, I read that and think, Lord, if there's something I'm supposed to be doing and I'm doing something, that's one of the reasons. Look, you just, I'm just going to say it. I'm not a nap taker. I, you know, I sleep at night, great. I hit the bed, boom, I'm gone, I'm out. I don't wake up. And if you need to take a nap, take a nap. But you better not be taking a nap when you're supposed to be doing something else. Hello? Hello? The sailors had to tell Jonah to pray. They tell him, verse 6. Call, arise, get up, call upon your God. Jonah was hurting the people of Nineveh and the men on the boat, and he didn't even care. Your life affects people you don't know. Your life affects, number two, people close to you. Number three is the, is the answer. See the problem. And do the right thing. Jonah admits his sin, doesn't he? Huh? Let's talk through this and we'll stop. He admits his sin. He chose punishment. Throw me overboard. I wonder if he thought he could swim back to shore. He never saw. He never said, throw me in. God will swallow me. He didn't see all that. All he saw was, just let, I've done the wrong thing. Maybe, we don't know, but maybe he thought, God just needs to kill me. I just need to drown. Maybe I can swim back. I don't know what he's thinking. But I do know that he should have asked the men to help him. He should have repented for the sake of all those men in the boat. Correct? Hey, let me talk to you personally for a minute. When you have kids and your kids break your heart and they don't repent, it has an effect on you. We don't hear about that much. We won't talk about repentance. You say, well, what happens when they ask for forgiveness? You forgive them. But if they don't, you rebuke them, and you don't do anything until they repent. That's hard. But that's how you handle it. You don't accept anything less than their right decision, which is repenting. Sin is a big deal. Hey, I know it's Wednesday. I know you're the cream of the crop or whatever you think you are. The cherry on top. Maybe you're the whipped cream. I'd rather be the hot fudge. Whatever you think you are. Sin is a big deal. It has to be dealt with. It has to be corrected. You don't just get over it. People are affected. If I was God, I would have forced Jonah to do the right thing. You know what God did? He made it hard for him to do the wrong thing. That's how God always works. 
swim or not. I don't know what Jonah was doing. I don't know if he's treading. I don't know if he's swimming. No matter what he did, God sent a fish to grab him. And inside that fish, Jonah realizes that his life wasn't worth living without God on his side. God loves us. He loves us so much that he doesn't want us to hurt ourselves. I want God's blessing, don't you? I, I want God to bless me. And sometimes it's hard to live for him. Sometimes it's hard to, to keep going. But God has such of a great desire to bless us that he can't do that. He can't bless us if we run away from what he asks us to do. If God blesses you when you run away, follow me and I'm through. If God blesses you when you run away, he looks bad. When you run away from God, knowing that he can bless you, you look bad. God will always, hey, hey, here's the good part. <laughs> God will always give us another chance to do the right thing. Look at me, look at me. I wouldn't have given Jonah, if I was God, and that could happen someday. If I was God, I wouldn't have given him another chance. One strike, you're out. What'd God do? Squeezed him, put his thumb on him. Jonah cried, Uncle God, okay, Uncle God. God had the fish spit him out. God said, all right, let's try this again. The people in Nineveh are still lost. The people in Nineveh still have not heard the gospel. The people in Nineveh still need you there. What would Jonah say? I'm on my way. You know why God gives you another chance to do the right thing? Because that's how he wants people to see him. He's a God of the second chance. That he, he, when you turn, he'll forgive you and he'll give you another chance. Got to do the right thing. Pray with me. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You say, preacher, tonight, I, there's decisions. And they might be little decisions. I don't know what you're thinking about. I'm not picking on you over some great big decision. I heard something or read something. I'm just talking about little stuff that adds up and gets us away from God. And it's time that we just say, man, when God tells me to do something, I need to do it. Because you make him look bad. You make him look bad to people you don't know, and you make him look bad to people that know you well. So we need to choose to do the right thing. We need to choose to do what he says. If you don't, he'll make it hard for you to do the wrong thing. He won't force you to do right, but he'll make it hard for you to do the wrong thing, and then he'll give you another chance as long as you repent. And then, boom, Jonah does the right thing, and then he gets talking crazy again. I knew I shouldn't have went to Nineveh. I knew I should have. That was a mistake. You didn't hear you saved him. And, and I don't know what he's thinking, man. That's just a crazy, it ends in a crazy way. But for you tonight, your head bowed, your eyes closed. You say, preacher, God, God knows that I want to do the right thing. God knows that I need to obey whatever he tells me to do. And and God is speaking to me, and I don't know what it is, but you say, preacher, God is speaking to me tonight about something. God brought it up. God brought it up. Now, I'm going to take care of it, if that's you. Here's my hand, preacher. God is speaking to me. If that's you. Put it up high, up and down. Preacher, God's speaking to me tonight. God's speaking to me. Anybody else? Here's my hand. Preacher, God, I, I, I'm thankful for a second chance. I see him up and down. I'm thankful, preacher, for a second chance. You know what? He'll give it, but don't just assume he will, and you don't deserve it. You need to take the first chance. Do what God says. Take the first chance. Do what God says. Dear Lord, help us to be very careful, very, very careful about obeying you. Help us, Lord. Please help us. Help us to see sin is a big deal. Use us, Lord. 
Help us to do what you say. I pray this. In Jesus' name, amen.